What's up guys, my name is Lex Feltes and welcome to another episode of Learn with Lex. Today we're going to be looking at a freeze-out tournament. Everybody's pretty deep, but I think it's very important. Of course, it's exciting to play bounty builders, it's exciting to play short stack, but these tournaments are also some of the bread and butter in the schedule. Now, if you make a mistake for 100 big blinds, it's... Uh, an absolute disaster so today i'm gonna uh, try and show you to maneuver a little bit in tournaments like this uh, in the runtime above me you can see how long the tournament has been running and how long is in between my decisions i'm going to talk about every single decision that i have or if something is a non-decision to me but i think that you guys might want to play the hand um, then i'm definitely going to be talking about it some example could be having like a7 from an earlier position i'm going to explain to you guys why you should fold it and why you shouldn't play it so I hope that some deep stacked hands are going to be coming up and some tough uh, situations because deep stack poker is actually incredibly tough and very complicated. All right, we got to check our option here in the big blinds. No big blind special for us. Uh, one thing we need to remember is that we can make the biggest claim to tens and fours, which is actually something I'm going to do right now. They check twice. They're going to limp more high cards. So let's start putting a little bit of pressure here. It's not just about what we have on a board, but it's also what can we represent, right? We're the only person in the whole hand there that sees the board with all our hands. So 100% of our hands see that board. That means we have four deuce offsuits, 10 deuce offsuits, you name it, and we have it. So uh, incredibly important to always remember that. Sometimes, you know, you disregard, disregard completely what you have, but you look at a board and it's like, hey, can I make a claim to this, yes or no? And if the answer is yes, then it's usually a good time to put a bluff in. Especially when your opponents don't show any interest in the pot, right? That's also an important factor. All right, so we're going to be calling here with pocket threes. There's no need to raise. Pocket pairs in position. Everybody's super deep. Let's see what happens. I'm definitely planning on calling here. There's already 20 big blinds in the pot. We're going to see a flop with pocket threes. That's not it, but... Let's not immediately revert to thinking that we lost the hand. All right, now we did. That's a ginormous uh, continuation bet. Uh, generally, you don't really need to do this on boards like this. You know, both for your value when you have aces, ace, king, ace, queen, and for your bluffs, it works a lot better to bet a lot smaller. So this is a gigantic bet, which somebody will never make with jacks or kings, right? So um, it also defines uh, what they have a little bit more. So we're just going to get out the way. All right, so we have nine four suited here in the big blinds. Uh, we're going to defend this. Important to note, though, that uh, they made it three times the big blind. So a lot of my offsuit combinations will start falling to this. Um, it's very important to realize that you get worse odds. Now, this is very interesting. Uh, usually, uh, paired boards are in the favor of the big blinds because uh, of the reason that I will defend all the uh, suited threes and they don't raise them, right? I have 5-3 suited, 6-3 suited. Just the fact that I have 9-4 proves it, right? I could have 8-3 suited um, and whatever. They Generally, people bet pretty small on these kind of boards. This was a really big bet, which I would not advise, but it's fine. I think in lower stakes, people oftentimes will look at these boards and look at them as dry, like 5-5-6. Five, five, they think, oh, dry board, no flush draw, barely any stray draws. So it's sort of like a classic auto revert to I'm going to start bluffing, but it's exactly the opposite of what you should be doing on paired boards versus the big blinds. Uh, I'm going to call twice just because um, I really believe that this person thinks that this is a super dry board. And there we go. A6 off. Story checks out perfectly. And so... I think that this is a perfect, perfect example. In my chat, a lot of people will ask me, hey Lex, the concepts that you teach about or GTO or uh, when I study BBZ poker, they don't apply to my micro stakes. And I think that this illustrates perfectly that you, it's good to know good theory and then how to adjust away from it, right? It's really good to know the baseline of what would be really good and then adjust based on your opponent on low stakes. So my opponent is going to bet too much. They are going to look at this board as too dry. And I know that because I know what's good. So I also know what somebody that doesn't probably study the game as much, uh, the mistakes that they'll be making. Okay, so we have somebody limping. We're going to raise with queen nine. It's nice to take the initiative a little bit. When you want to decide what hands to play against a limper, it's really important that you uh, don't go too crazy with it. So if you... 
Okay. If you have a hand like Ace-5 offsuit, I would just fold this. Even though you see an Ace, you see a Limper. You want to cut away the bottom of what you would play had there been no people. So if I want to decide if I'm going to uh, isolate the Limper, right? Raise against the Limper. Uh, I would just look at what hands do I normally play from this position and then just cut away the bottom. Because you do have a, a person already interested in the pot that you have to contest with. And this is a very important fact. I think that this person shares a lot of the same boards with me. Um, somebody that limps, that, you know, there's a lot of like ace-jack, jack-10 suited, maybe some king-queen, maybe some queen-jack. All of that would be pretty weak to, to, to call and then, you know, call a, a, a raise, re-raise situation. Also because I still have the option, right? Like what if I have aces or kings, I can now push them out of the pot. I'm not gonna be chasing a gut shot here. Generally, in a lot of spots, guys, if you wanna call for a gut shot, it's really good to have at least one of your suits on board. If this was like rainbow with one club, I would still fold, but you know, there's a little bit more consideration. So we just fold there, it's absolutely fine. Play the pot in position. Over here, sorry, I was playing a hand on a different table. Of course, I'm recording three of these videos at the same time. Uh, there was a raise, we called, and we flopped a diamond draw. We bet it after a check, and then we're gonna bet the ace. We're gonna tax us like queen 10, queen jack, jacks, tens, whatever is all in there. All right, eight, 10 big blinds, nothing else to do with shove. It's funny because normally this is not a, a short stack video, but it happens in freeze outs as well. So let's see how we can navigate. Very nice. All right, we have tens, so we just doubled with eights. Let's see if we can repeat that miracle. Obviously hoping for an all-in. We're 17 big blinds deep. Don't start panic going all-in with pairs and stuff. You have plenty of room to raise still. I can in fact say that zero pairs from under the gun with 17 big blinds are an all-in, but I see people non-stop going all-in with fives, sixes, eights. You can just min-raise. You just fold deuces, threes, fours, fives probably, and then raise sixes and then see what you're gonna do. I see a diamond in my future. Oh, close. Absolutely fine though. We just adjust eight big lines now, new situation. Don't start gambling just because you lost the pot. Oh, I just lost two all ins and I should have had this. Don't, don't do all that nonsense. All right, so we're just gonna go all in. Uh, what we need to decide here when we shove from the big blind is are we generally ahead of what somebody opens had they raised from that spot i might have been more inclined to just call but here the button is going to open so many hands we're just going to go all in and get immediate value yes this is going to happen and then this is going to happen but sometimes they'll have uh nice sometimes they'll have you know king five suited queen ten off you name it they have uh, the, you name it they have it all right, we're just gonna go all in here. They both have seven big blinds. So, you know, even though we're playing 18 big blinds, also take a look at the stacks, right? I could have 100 big blinds and think, oh, I can just raise because I have 100 big blinds. If both the blinds only have seven, then effectively we're also seven big blinds uh, deep. Okay, we can all in over any open. We can call any all in. It's very easy. Play hands like this. Even if it goes wrong, don't start thinking, maybe we should have called. We could have gotten away on the flop. Like, I read that so often. People will always think, oh no, something went wrong. Let's retrace our steps. Just play good and then accept the result. Could jam as well. It's absolutely fine. No, I think the, the, the advantage over jamming is that uh, they don't get to see the flop with hands like jacked and suited. Obviously, we're going to call. Wow. Pretty big setup. Team Pro! Nice. Okay, so this person seems to have a subscription to the flop. So a third time in a row, we're just gonna raise them. We got a lint here. It's only three big lines more. You can say, oh wow, maybe they have kings. It's so strong. Maybe they have... it doesn't matter. You have to pay three big lines. If if they show us kings, we call. That's that's how good odds we're getting. <laughs> Fuck me. Alright, what do we do now? I think I'm still all in. I think I think this person still has like enough king queen and shit like that. I mean, I didn't ask for these powers, guys. It's just, yeah. Is this is this surprising to me? 
I mean, obviously I called out his hand. So in a general sense, is it surprising that people do random shit like that? Yes, but it doesn't mean it's bad. And this is the number one thing that people always tell me. Oh, low stakes. It's so hard because people do random shit. Great. Let people do random shit all day long. I'll be the richest fucking $1 player in the entire world. All right, so we called here pre-flop, despite there's some new people joining the table, despite what you see here. We called uh, very rando boards. Let's just bet once to get rid of all his jack three, all of his four, five. I mean, we have almost the worst possible hand that we can have. Only takes one big blind, easy peasy. All right, so we're gonna call here. It's only seven big blinds to call. They're gonna jam a wide variety of jack nines and 10 nines and other stuff to have was dominated. Again, this is not a spot where we go, oh, should we have folded because they have ace jack and we have queen jack? No, it's eight big blinds, we have queen jack. They shove a ton of hands that we're doing really well again, so no need to think about all the standard ones. So pocket fives, we see, scan the table. I wanted to make a 2.2, people actually aren't short, so we're just gonna jam. <laughs> the nice thing about jamming, I mean, they have 19 big blinds, the rest is like 12, 13. And we get called, which is fine. The nice thing about jamming is that people don't go all in with their own jack-10 suited or queen-jack suited. They'll just fold them now most of the time. And that's huge, right, for a hand like fives. Absolutely huge to get hands like that to fold. Even against a caller, we're going to be do we're doing just fine. <laughs> right. Okay, it's all good. Okay, so generally uh, in these kind of situations, you want to think about if we are going to go all in, yes or no. And uh, we go all in with the offsuit King-10 and we call the King-10 suited uh, just because the King-10 suited plays a lot better uh, post-flop. Uh, you can definitely uh, start opening hands like this. But uh, again, we can have 33 and a half big blinds, but it's very important for us to see how the players behind us are doing. And there's lots of stacks that are just going to lump it in against us. So we're just going to get out of the way. Very important. You're not just playing your own stack. Okay, we get a, a pretty cheap look at the flop. Would call any suited hand. This is obviously Mighty Mike's wheelhouse. He's gonna limp a lot of the Queen Jack, Jack 10s, Jack 9s suited. So he's gonna give up. Okay, so very nice. We see a raise, a all in, 10 big blinds. We're vastly ahead. I mean, I don't think I really need to explain that this is a good spot to go all in uh, to most of you guys. So that's what we'll do. Nice, he gives me the firework. 10 4 suited! Wow, very adventurous. I have to say, that's nice. 10 4 suited. <laughs> okay, hello. <laughs> 10 4 suited, I guess he had places to be. Get off the fucking computer right now. Okay. Oh, but I, I didn't get a hand yet. All right, again, uh, we can be 45 lines deep. Let's scan the table. Short stack, short stack, short stack. Min raise. Button is super deep, though. But um, come at me, bro. I'd highly invite... Uh, I'd very uh, happily invite you to make a play at me, sir. Is this guy sponsored or what? I mean, how am I going to make money? <laughs> Too good. It's only 10 bigs. Just give me, give me deuce seven jack. I mean, it doesn't, yeah, like, uh, to be really honest, I'll be very honest with you guys. If I'm playing high stakes, I'm betting one big blind on this board because I would always bet one big blind on this board versus the big blinds. If I check, I automatically have a hand that's way too strong. Um, but on these stakes, I'm, uh, I'm still, I don't, I don't need to think about that, right? So now I'm just going to do what's best for my hands. You see, board's too strong. Okay. All right. I guess we'll stick with this table, yeah? You guys don't know I'm switching anyway. Uh, 3x. Eh, if they go all in, they can go all in. They can go all in. Eh. If they min race, I'll call. But with the short stacks behind me, because then you get in a situation where they go all in, they might isolate. It's a bit awful. Oh, there you go. A bit awful. So it's going to get rid of threes. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, so it's absolutely fine. 10 3. Oh, that guy would have loved the sound. I think that spells the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this video is not is never going to have a conclusion because this particular segment is usually about deep stack. How do we play 30, 40, 50 big blinds deep? How do we stay out of trouble? What hands do we play? When do we re-raise? When do we not? 
Um, so, uh, sorry if this doesn't give you closure, but I hope there's, uh, I think that we played enough interesting hands for it to be worth to you guys. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, concerns, feedback. Uh, I also have a Discord channel. You have a direct line towards me. Uh, you can ask strategy questions there. People help each other all the time. I'm in there nonstop pretty much. Um, and you can find the link of that in the description. Also, follow me on Twitter. Uh, obviously, I'm very active there. Same name. Well, mine is a TV because that's not my name. So, and then like and subscribe the video if you like it. Lots of things, but all very useful, uh, to be honest, especially the Discord one. And if you want to show your appreciation, that's very much appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.